Welcome to the Smite God reveal for Scotty, the goddess of winter. Celebrating in the halls of Asgard, the gods drank and feasted while the body of Jotun Tiazi lay cold nearby. Odin and his ilk boasted of their achievements, laughing and cheering to celebrate. At that moment, the doors swung wide, breathing icy wind across the hall. There she stood, pale as snow, clad in furs, eyes blue as glacier ice ablaze with vengeful fire, spear in hand. Skadi, the Jotun's daughter, had come. The gods sought to dissuade her from violence. As a symbol of honor, Odin cast the eyes of her father into the heavens to twinkle as stars for eternity. Unsatisfied, she demanded, a life for a life. However, it was Loki who persuaded her. Through his wit and charm, her frozen features melted away. Odin declared Skadi would marry a god and in turn become a goddess. Skadi agreed. Blindfolded, she was to choose her husband. Niord was a god of summer and Skadi a goddess of winter. After a few years, they amicably parted ways. Skadi returned to the snow-capped mountains of her youth, but without her father or husband, she soon grew lonely. Word spread of a war between the pantheons, Odin and Loki, Njord and Ulr. These gods were her family now, and Skadi would not lose the only family she had left. Skadi's passive is her companion, Calder, the Winter Wolf. Calder fights by Skadi's side and has two forms, Beast and Elemental. While in beast form, he can attack enemies and be attacked. While elemental, he can't attack, is immune to damage, and regenerates health over time. His forms can be controlled with Scotty's second ability, Rune of the Hunt. Keep in mind, Calder will be forced into elemental form if he loses all his hit points. Scotty's first ability is Piercing Cold. Scotty throws an icy spear forward, dealing damage to enemies and slowing them for three seconds. Calder's basic attacks deal double damage to targets afflicted by piercing cold. Scotty's second ability is Rune of the Hunt. Scotty marks an enemy for Calder to hunt. While toggled on, Calder assumes beast form, chasing and attacking the marked enemy. If the marked enemy dies, Calder attacks other enemies nearby. When toggled off, Calder stops attacking and returns to Scotty, reverting to his elemental form on the way. Additionally, Calder gains new skills as this ability ranks up, including a dash, a heal, and providing Scotty with increased movement speed. This ability can be used used at rank zero. Scotty's third ability is Permafrost. Scotty freezes the ground for five seconds at a target location. The frozen area deals damage to enemies who set foot on it and causes gods to lose control of their movement as they slide across. Scotty's movement speed increases by 25% while standing on the area. When triggered, snowstorms surround both Scotty and Calder. Enemies in range become rooted, and Calder is restored to full health. Calder also gains full damage immunity for the full duration of the ability. The storms persist for 5 seconds while dealing damage to enemies every 0.5 seconds. One of your standard combinations will be to send Calder onto a target about to be hit by piercing cold. By sending out Calder first, you will give Calder time to get to the target by the time piercing cold hits, allowing Calder to do more damage to his prey. The additional damage may mean enemies will need to simply run rather than trying to damage Calder to get him away. Since enemies caught on your permafrost will slide in a straight line, they will be easy pickings for basic attacks and your piercing cold skill shot. Use the time they are moving predictably to guarantee some damage or use it to spread out enemies for your benefit. While seemingly obvious that you would want to send Calder onto a target before ulting, knowing how your enemy will play with a giant wolf running at them is important. By sending Calder out, but not ulting until the last possible moment before he becomes elemental, you can get enemies to spend precious time attacking Calder, which will be wasted time once you ultimate. You may also encourage melee gods to get close to try and kill Calder, only to be rooted once the ultimate happens. 
Scotty is a hunter who excels at kiting enemies, avoiding damage by always staying a good distance away. Calder allows Scotty to control where the enemy wants to move, while Permafrost controls how enemies move, and Piercing Cold slows enemy movement, giving a good Scotty player some seriously good positioning tools. Pair her with characters that can help peel for her if the kiting isn't enough, such as Geb or Kepri, or characters who can make use of the Permafrost movement, like Anhor or Poseidon. Scotty sneaks up on Artemis and releases Calder to slow her down. Scotty finishes Artemis using her first ability. Calder is redirected to Guan Yu immediately once Artemis goes down. Scotty ults to give damage immunity to Calder, concurrently dealing damage to Kakolkan and Guan Yu. Scotty finishes the team with basic attacks, earns a quadra kill, and wins the game for her team. Scotty will want to start with Piercing Cold. This ability is Scotty's bread and butter clearing tool. Next, she will want Permafrost. This is her strongest tool for controlling the lane as well as further helping her clear. After another point in Piercing Cold, look to upgrade Rune of the Hunt just in time to give Calder a dash before getting your first point in Winter's Grasp. The dash will help Calder root and deal more damage to enemies when it comes time to ultimate. From there, you will want to prioritize Winter's Grasp, then Piercing Cold, followed by Rune of the Hunt, and finally, Permafrost. Scotty is a hunter who is better at having extended engagements. Lacking a steroid ability, she will perform better focusing on an attack speed build versus rushing critical strike. Start off with Charged Morningstar and some potions to go into the laning phase. Upgrade Charged Morningstar to Transcendence as soon as possible. Next, build Warrior Tabby and Echival. These first three items will give you good power, attack speed, and penetration, allowing you to box proficiently against most characters. Next, Rush, Kins, Seiss, and Asi. This continues ramping up attack speed and penetration, but also provides you more damage through Kins, Seiss, and some life steal, which is beneficial in longer fights. Close out the build with Titan's Bane to break through high armor targets who may give you some trouble. Thanks for watching the Smite God Reveal for Scotty.